Hey everyone, I did a lecture on barefoot running this week for a group of cross country runners and I thought I'd record it, uh, put the video out, hopefully you guys can learn something from it. So, barefoot running has really kind of become the craze and become the fad lately and lots of people are talking about it. Much of this started because of the book called Born to Run, which is written by Christopher McDougall. Uh, basically about a tribe in Mexico that runs through the mountains and desert uh, in sandals and or completely barefoot and has little to no foot injuries when they're actually running. And uh, if any of you have read the book, one of the most fascinating chapters I thought was when he talks about the evolution of the running industry and just how the modern running shoe wasn't necessarily backed by any scientific evidence. It was more backed by just strong marketing efforts of the shoe companies. Um, and the thing that you have to know when you're really talking about the feet is, look at it like this. The human body has 206 bones in it. Each foot has 28 bones. So if you're talking about 56 bones between your feet out of 206, more than a quarter of the bones in the human body are located in your feet. So when you're talking about that, you're talking about not only a lot of bones, but a lot of ligaments, a lot of tendons, a lot of connective tissue, a lot of fascia, um, lots of things going on in the feet. And the analogy that I always give people and why I talk to the runners about this week is for any of you out there that have ever broken a bone and have needed to get a cast on it, let's say it's an arm or a leg, what does that muscle look like when you finally get the cast taken back off? It's probably a lot smaller. That muscle is atrophied basically because it hasn't been used in a really long time. And the same sort of thing really happens with your feet where when you take the foot and you basically encapsulate it in something such as a running shoe, even if that running shoe has a lot of cushion, uh, it effectively minimizes the amount of strength and minimizes the amount that you actually have to use those small muscles and the small connective tissue going on in your feet. Uh, and most people didn't realize that. They thought, well, more cushion is better because we need to absorb the impact and what a lot of like force plate studies and studies that are going on now on barefoot running and on people that are going quote unquote minimalist running is that your body naturally responds to having less cushion underneath the foot and it's going to make you um, take basically a, a less forceful running stride. Uh, so some of the things I talked to the runners about this week is, you know, what I've noticed from when, when I started barefoot running and yeah, I started out with the, the big thing that was highlighted in the book Born to Run was called the Five Fingers. Most of you have probably seen this, Vibram Five Fingers. Uh, I've got a couple pairs of these. I've been running in them for a long time and I'm really sold on them. I really am. Uh, and I'm sold on them for a lot of people. But there are a couple things that you have to note. Is one, if you're talking about what makes the modern running shoe the modern running shoe is you've got a lot of cushion back here in the heel you've typically got quite a bit of arch support going on right here and when you actually take and when you twist the forefoot of the shoe it's more rigid up here and the reason that it does that is it's trying to control basically the amount of pronation or the amount that your foot is actually able to roll in with most running shoes. Uh, most of them will either do that or they'll just have a lot of cushion going on in the back heel. So enter the minimalist shoe and almost every company has some sort of shoe out there these days um, you, you know that is something like this. Five Fingers sort of started it but obviously because you don't have a lot of cushion going back here in the heel you just have enough tread to be able to really not allow your feet to get cut by glass. By lowering this down you know, if this is your Achilles tendon back here and this is your heel, by lowering this down, you've effectively got a lot more stretch and a lot more torque on not only your calf muscles, uh, but also your Achilles muscles and, you know, the fascia going on in your feet. So when I started using these, I was running probably 40 miles a week or so, and I started out with 10 minutes, and that was it. I would start out with 10 minutes in these, I'd run the rest of my run in a regular running shoe, and then I would slowly build that up to 15 minutes and 20 minutes, and I got up to a point where I've still never run more than 10 miles in one of these pairs of shoes, um, you know, but I built it up to a point where uh, yeah, I can easily take up to an hour run in the five fingers with some hills. And I can tell you firsthand that my feet feel so much better. I was a basketball player growing up, and 
I, I busted up my ankles a lot of times, and by doing that, I have very rigid feet, very rigid, inflexible ankles. And by using these, it seems that it's really, really gotten some of the muscles in my feet turned back on, and it's really helped me get some of that elasticity back in my feet. So my foot is actually able to move a little bit when it runs. So it feels really good to me, but again, I started off easy with just 10 minutes. Do not get a pair of these and go out and blow out the door for a six or an eight miler. You're going to feel it the next day, I promise you. So that's the point number one. The second point that I would definitely tell you is if your running form needs some work now, these shoes aren't going to be the magic here all. Um, don't think that if you're a heel striker, you know, or, or if you're not, if you're not lifting the heels up behind you or, or if you're not a four foot striker or whatnot, this isn't going to magically make your running form great. It will help it. Yes, if, if you're a heel striker and someone that rolls forward as opposed to being, you know, landing more on, on your forefoot or midfoot and spinning it underneath you, it'll help you move more towards a forefoot striker or midfoot striker, but you still have to supplement using something like this, um, you know, with your basic running drills and with your basic form work, or, or it's never necessarily going to work that way. So those are two really important things to keep in mind, but I do believe that the foot, like anything else, needs to be strong um, if you want to run well and I think a lot of runners can benefit from it and the last thing that I'll leave you with is a good test on whether or not you're actually ready to do barefoot or minimalist running is just take your shoes off and go and stand on your hardwood floor and if you can stand on one foot with your eyes closed for 30 seconds without falling over then you're probably ready for minimalist or for, or for some type of barefoot running, at least starting off easy in it anyway. What you're going to find is when you stand on one foot barefoot and do it with both feet, uh, you're going to notice all those smaller muscles in your feet and all those smaller muscles in your lower legs working when you close your eyes. Um, that are the same ones that are going to get turned back on and that are going to get stronger when you use something like this. So the nice thing about it is even if you can't pass that barefoot test standing on one foot, if you just do that a couple times a day for a week or so, it'll, it'll get those muscles back re-engaged and you should be able to go back into it in a hurry um, and start out with this type of running if it's something that you want to get into. So that's all I've got for today. Uh, I apologize for sweating a little bit out here. I just got done with the track workout, but... Have a great rest of the day, and I will see you next time.